my name is Corey Klassen and I'm the Executive Director for the Lesser Slave Forest Education Society. Today we're going to talk about wetlands. So I have with me the world's smallest wetland. And I have a strainer. We're going to put the wetland into the strainer. And this represents our entire landscape. We have wetland and then we have the land around the wetland. This is what we're going to be using for our wetland inquiry demonstration. We're going to start off by making it rain on our wetland. So what happens when it rains? Well, the wetland absorbs the water. Surface water and rainwater collect in the wetland until the wetland is saturated and then the water will run through and join up with the groundwater. So wetlands have large storage capacities. So if I bring it out, you can see that it collects and holds a lot of water. And this allows wetlands to control water movement on the landscape, as we'll see with our next demonstration, which shows what happens when you build on a wetland. So we're going to build some roads. We're going to build some houses. We'll build some businesses and some more businesses. And so we've built on top of our wetland and now what's going to happen when it rains? Well, the wetland is no longer able to absorb the water and take it down into the groundwater. And so what happens is it can cause flooding and other overland water problems. All right. For the next demonstration, we're going to see what happens when we put dirty water into the wetland. So I have some dirty, dirty water and our wetland. So this is, this dirty water represents uh, its soil, its sediments, its other things that happen to collect in the water. And when they encounter the wetland, you see they filter. Wetlands act as filters and filter out things like soil and sediment. And so the water that comes out the other end is quite clean. That's why wetlands are considered nature's kidneys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my wetland inquiry demonstration today. Thank you so much for watching.